Hi everyone, so I need some shelves. Uh, the original plan was just I was going to buy some off of Amazon and then I saw the price. Being the tight Scotsman that I am, there is no way I'm paying that. So I've decided to make my own and see if I can do it cheaper. Before I jump into this, if you could hit that sub button, that'd be great. And now, here we go. So I started off by changing over the blades. I, I needed a new blade for this anyway, the old one was knackered. Uh, for the very smart people there will have noticed I made a mistake straight away. And what I did wrong took me over a week and on a completely other job before I could work out what I'd done wrong. I, I was genuinely thinking my batteries were knackered. It's like it's a new saw blade, they can't be anything like that. So it's got to be the batteries or the motor inside were wrecked. But no, turns out I can't figure out the right way to put a blade on and it was the wrong way around. But it made this really bad edging. Uh, like it burst out so much the back end on this that it just I, I'm able to hide it for this project because it's for me I start out by cutting out the shelves uh, these were 76 centimeters by 24 centimeters once I did a little bit of mass and added everything together I realized I was only going to need a third of a sheet my dad decided just to come along and help himself with the other two thirds of a sheet uh, I got a really good deal on this because it was classed as damaged. Uh, the damage being a few little nicks out of the face and, and some dirty marks that I can either just cut around or I can sand them off and you'll never know they're there. So I made a miter box for this, which is the best way to cut miters if you don't have a chop saw. Personally, a chop saw 100 times quicker, so much better. But I'm going to tell you how I made this. Uh, it's just a disposable one. It's like a one-off use. You throw it, you cut it, you throw it. You make them from scrap. So you take some wood, same thickness as what you're waiting to cut, you sandwich it between the scrap, mark the positions on a base plate, pre-drill uh, for some screws, add some glue, stick it down, screw the two sides to the bottom plate. Once your glue's dried, make a 45 degree angle, uh, or whatever angle you're waiting to cut, so it could be a 90, it could be a 33, whatever angle you need, you mark it there, boom, and you cut it. Personally, I prefer a tenon saw for doing this. I've tried those Japanese saws a few times and I just can't, yeah, I just don't like them. And I think I get a better finish, me personally, with a tenon saw. Uh, if you want this to go really smoothly, what you don't do is put your screws in, don't really think, and then start cutting, or you'll do what I did there and you'll try to cut through the head of a screw, which is possible, it just takes a long, long time and it'll knacker your blade. Okay, so full disclosure, what you're seeing right now is a dramatic reconstruction as I somehow lost all the footage of me cutting this up and I didn't realise till editing this last week that I'd lost all this footage. I uh, think I lost it, with my mem one of my memory cards went full so I transferred stuff and I maybe didn't get everything and that's the only way I can think it just went missing because I've got this stuff and I've got stuff from after I just don't have this so I, I don't understand where it's went and obviously delete everything off the card so I can reuse them sorry <laughs> so there was only three lengths three different sizes of uh, the 25 by 45 to cut uh, four were cut at 510 so these are going to be stretcher plates underneath the shelving and that just makes it to make it a little bit stronger um, so I then had 16 at 220 and 16 at 300 millimeters. Uh, these last few just make up, uh, I suppose, the support boxes. Uh, once they're all cut and I still can't be bothered going raking through lots of boxes to find my strap clamps. So I ended up just using packing tape to hold them together. It's easy to do and just tape them together, lay them down, glue them up, put them all back together. This ended up working really well. Uh, for me, for some reason, I had really good miters. Uh, if you wipe off the excessive glue uh, before it sets, you'll end up having to do very little sanding, which is always the bonus. So because it was minus six at this point, uh, and about three, four inches of snow, I kind of moved inside and so I'm sitting inside uh, essentially a messy storeroom so please forgive the mess, I'm really sorry. Also with this, my camera angle sucks, I don't have room to move stuff around uh, so I'm really not happy with the camera angles on this. I'm sorry, okay, I am really sorry about this and once I get a workshop I will, I promise my angles and stuff will get a lot better, I, I really hope. Looking at Amazon's version of this, they use aluminium, yes. 
That is how you pronounce it, America. You guys can just let me have this. I've started using dollars for you lot, so let me have this, okay? Please. But anyway, I'm not going to use aluminium. Uh, I'm just going to use wood, which I'm going to paint black so it does look the same. And also black and oak always looks pretty good. Uh, I ended up having three coats of this. And I am also in this bit here in my pyjama bottoms and slippers. Uh, because, you know, laziness. Uh, in between each coat, just give it a really light sand to take off some of the bits. And then I stick another coat on. Um... Off camera, stuck on a coat of furniture wax just to see if I can give it a little bit more of a gloss finish. I don't think it's worked out very well, um, but it's also meant to give you a little bit of protection on coating, so I'm good for that. You, you can see I've left the top of these box sections and this, the top of the straps. I haven't put any paint on these, um, and that's because originally I was going to glue these on as well as screw it, but I've kind of thought, well, if I ever need to strip this down, I don't want it to be glued together, so I haven't glued it together. I <laughs> took the tops outside when it slightly warmed up and the snow went away. Quickly hot them with uh, 200 grit. So after that's done, I kind of had to get these terrible cuts. And honestly, there's not much I can do with them. But because only one side is messed up, so it's the bottom side is gotten messed up. I'm going to flip them over so they'll be on the bottom of the shelf. And you're not going to see them. Unless you're looking from, lying on the floor looking up, then you'll see it. But if I find anyone doing that in the house, I'll probably give them a little bit of kick. Uh, so I managed to pick up some iron on edging for, I worked out to like 20, 50 cents uh, per meter on the edging, which is really good. So this stuff's really easy to put on if you've never used it. What you do is you wait for your wife to go to work, you steal the iron from the cupboard, uh, put the banding down, heat it up, glue melts to the MDF, uh, make sure you press it down really hard to help the glue get a really good hold. And uh, once it's all dried and solid, come along with a Stanley knife and just clean it up. For once I decided to buy one of those edging cutters and 100% the biggest waste of money I've ever done in a long time. It was terrible edging, it looked horrible, it was like taking chunks out. So I scrapped it, had to pull off a bunch of the edging that I'd try to do this with. Um, to re remake it. So I went back to the old school way I used all, I've always done it before, which is a brand new, really sharp Stanley knife and just cut around the edges. Definitely works better. Because I'd mucked up those cuts at the start, this ended up, it created little, you can normally just run the blade straight across and it's perfect. But because of these little dips and the cracks and the, the facing, it would dig in and it's not giving me as good a finish as I always as I usually get with this stuff but again it's for my house and I can get away with it there we go I'll be honest I can get away with this here if I was ever selling something like this I couldn't get away with it I would have to like redo the whole thing to be honest I was thinking about this as well actually if you had a good solid really sharp block plane might be great just to rip along the face and just to take a little bit more off before you come around with the blade but then after my Stanley knife with some sandpaper, smoothed the edges that were okay down, made them look better. I'm kind of too lazy to go right for my block plane. So once this was all done, went for three coats of just a clear varnish to give it some protection. Sand in between each coat always makes it look a lot better. I really wanted to connect these strapping on the box sections with some like little nice... In my head I was like, oh, I'm going to do some really good half lap joinery here, make it look better so instead of doing this really nice half lap on the bracings to save a little bit of time just drilled a hole stuck a screw in used the worst screws i could have ever found in my life don't know where they came from they're terrible just really small heads and another small enough uh, palsy bit to get that right but just glued it screwed it it works fine um i keep coming back and forth on a pocket hole jig not sure if they're worth the money if anyone's got one happy uh, give me an opinion on it let me know down below to see if they're actually worth any money and if they'd recommend one. Let me know, please help. So I just pretty much copied the same design as I did for Amazon. Um, just stepped all legs, different size, pre-drilled everything. It was really easy to set. It was like hard flush on one side, gives you 160 millimeters on the other side and just stepped that all the way up and it provides support on the bottom side of the shelving and make it look better. For screwing this all together, I made sure to pre-drill all the spots just to keep it looking nice and tidy. If, if you're trying something just to screw through MDF, it can cause a lip and a lift and it, it's not, 
it's not a big deal, but it doesn't look great. And I, I, I've already made enough mistakes on this project that I wanted it to look as good as I could. So now to sum up, did I beat Jeff Bezos or did he spank me? So I got, uh, okay, so the false sheet of MDF cost me $25 and I only used a third of it. So we're going to say the, eight, uh, the MDF cost me $8.50. I got the 21 by 45 for $15 and the edge banding was, I think it works out to about $3.50. I ended up spending on that. I've still got a bunch of it left over, which might go on other projects. We'll just see what happens, which means I spent a total of $27 on making this. Considering at one point, Amazon was looking for $102 at the exchange rate right now. Thinking about that, that's just insanely cheap. So I'd calmly say I completely spanked Jeff Bezos, I'm better than him, and I deserve all his money. If you stuck around this long, uh, thanks uh, for making it to the end. If you have something on Amazon and wonder if I can do it better, just seriously drop it down in the comments below. It would be really good. Um, please, if, if you're doing this, try and kind of keep it low-key and easy, because remember, I don't have a workshop, and making complicated stuff at the moment is very, very difficult. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, cheers. Bye.